with you. Like we would, you, 10 years ago, we'd go out and tree a coon and we'd shine around and there'd be 10, 15, 20 other coons looking at us. Now we tree, we see what we tree and sometimes see two or three others. It's not what it, I know everybody sees them on their deer baits and stuff, but they're not near what they were 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. TV has been brought to you by Rackstacker Brand Products, Canada's leading big game attractants company. Campbellford Chrysler, a small town dealer with a huge inventory. And Hockabones Equipment, Ottawa Valley's Kubota dealer. And these other fine sponsors. Look at the size of him, eh? <laughs> I was thinking like an 18 inch beagle or something. No, and he's not that tall, but he's very stocky, this one. Go ahead, lead the way. Okay, up this way? Yep, just follow right up through that trail there. Now, I've known Luke for about 20 years now, and since I can remember, he's always had a hound at his side. From October through January, we're able to harvest raccoons for their hides, and that's what we're doing today. So does he chase the bear, and, or no? Hopefully not. <laughs> I mean, we do everything we can to uh, keep these dogs straight on coon. I'm not saying they don't bump things once in a while, especially the younger dogs, but we we got the technology to stop them pretty quick when we're training them. Now, when you're working with dogs in the field, it's sometimes a waiting game for them to get onto a fresh track. And what we're waiting for is Duke to let us know what's going on with the sound of his bark. The hardest trash to break them off of in this area is probably porcupines. Oh yeah. Uh, and that's the ones I hate the worst. Because uh, they can hurt them. It just becomes work because you're picking out all the, yeah. the quills. Yeah. Yeah. When I say the hardest, it's because they're so tempting for a dog. They're not very smart and they just sit there in front of them, right? Yep. And using the GPS units, we can see how far away Duke is and following his movement. So you can track them with that? Yep, this is a GPS tracker, so it'll show he's got the same board. This is the dog here. The blue is where we're standing. Holy! The yellows, the fields, and the green is the woods. This is the fields. We were joined by one of Luke's closest friends, Ken Kinnear, an experienced townsman that's traveled all over North America with his dogs. Ken was showing my son Logan about how the GPS works. How many yards? 256. 256 yards. Which again, that's a test. Even on a bad night, ten years ago, he wouldn't. Uh, they wouldn't have gone half that without getting a strike. Eh, Ken? Really? Yeah. And now it's not uncommon. We've had them go half, three quarters of a mile some nights before they find one. Wow. I got 15 at home on a bait. We can go chase. <laughs> Now Duke is on to something. 
We're waiting for him to have consistent rhythm within his bark. Before the break, we were waiting on Duke the Hound to bay up a raccoon from the cornfield. A consistent bark tells us to start moving in. Now I'm sure Duke done his job, but there's an awful amount of leaves that were in the tree and we couldn't find anything so we had to move on. He might have missed or the coon might have been in one of them holes back there. So I didn't see one sitting up anywhere close. Duke, Duke, this way. Hey, come on, come on, this way. Come on. Duke was certainly an active dog that night as it wasn't long before he was barking again and on to another track for us to pursue. Now when you're hunting raccoon at night, a licensed dog is required as well as a small games license in Ontario and no larger than a 22 caliber long rifle can be used. I'd suggest checking your regulations before doing this type of hunt. You need to let the dog know that he's done a good job and that he's been a good boy. It keeps the dog confident in his job as they do get excited when they've worked really hard. Yeah. Oh, see, looking at us now. Right? Yeah. See, it's amazing how little leaves they can hide in, eh? The top one's just gonna, can you see the other side? Yeah. yeah. Right there, and there's one right there. Shoot them all. <laughs> <laughs> That's a gunner right there. <laughs> it's time to take aim with the 22 caliber rifle we were using that night. Kevin said this gun's good, so it's real good. Isn't it? <laughs> Okay, the go lower ahead. left, right? Right between the eyes. Am I okay with the light? <laughs> yeah, we're good. It's a hit. Yeah. Oh, you shot that one. <laughs> okay. The raccoons that we had harvested that night were being turned into the fur traders. Tell me if he looks prime. Not a real big one, but the, the bigger ones usually get primer. They, they need a little bit of weather to get prime. And everyone there on the hunt got to see Ken's experience as a fur trader.
Hunting with Luke, Ken, and Duke the Hound was the first time I had been out night hunting for raccoons in almost 20 years. I had a fantastic time having my son out there and some other great friends of ours. Now we're gonna call in Dave Reed, my local trapping instructor. Although I do have my trapping license, I wanted him to come in and teach my kids about trapping raccoons on the farm and managing the fur harvest. I remember 10 years ago, we took over 30 raccoons out of my barn. They are known for damaging crop, destroying structures like my barn, raiding duck and turkey nests for eggs, as well as being a carrier of rabies. The list goes on. While using the foothold trap, the kids were putting cat food and fish oil that was already pre-mixed into the trap so it makes the raccoon reach in and get his foot stuck. It's important to manage the raccoons because the population can get out of control. Recently on my trail cameras, I've had a family of raccoons move in and eat just about everything I put out. So Dave brought in a dozen foothold traps that get staked into the ground. It's law as a trapper that they need to be checked because they're live traps every 24 hours. I was using Rack Stacker Corn Cob. It's an awesome product to feed deer from late fall till springtime. But the raccoons can eat an awful amount in a short time. And this is one of the reasons why I called in my local trapper. By having Dave come out, I knew the kids would have an understanding of the outdoors and know the importance of fur harvest as well. These traps are not easy to set because of the strong spring. By squeezing the spring, it has a steel clip that holds it into place until the trigger inside is pulled by the raccoon. I had made a bet with my kids that day that they weren't able to pull the spring back on one of these traps. The bet wasn't to include four hands though. However, they did prove dad wrong. <laughs> when, you, when you give it a half twist, it bites in the ground a bit, so it gives him something to pull on. Once Ashton and Logan figured it out, off come the jacket. Logan was determined to do it again. In my opinion, I don't think enough of this type of thing is done for kids these days. For hundreds of years, folks relied on fur harvest for a living and to control population. I check my cameras regularly and the deer were still there even after I had left. And now, this week's Cut to the Chase segment brought to you by Rackstacker. Follow me over here for a quick sec. I've got something I'd like to share with you that I've used for many years now that works fantastic for holding game animals in front of your trail camera. It's referred to as the Rackstacker Protein Block. It's a 25 pound pressed block that draws in a lot of game animals throughout the year both in the springtime, throughout the wintertime, 
And it also is fantastic because the raccoons can't take off with it, obviously because of its weight. So I put a trail camera out about 30 inches off the ground at my locations, and you can monitor the deer throughout the year. And then, like I say, if you got a spot that's way back in the bush that you don't normally get to, this is a great way to hold them there without everything else eating your feet on you. Try the Rack Stacker Protein Block today. We'll go back after those coons. Welcome back to Homegrown Hunter TV. Before the break, we set raccoon traps with our local trapper, Dave Reed. The next day, we loaded up the ranger to see how we made out. And by law, we have to check the traps every 24 hours. The kids were excited to see what they got before catching the bus for school that morning. It was a gorgeous sunrise and the kids were excited to see what laid ahead as they had worked very hard the day before setting these traps. A little educational insight about the ethics of trapping. Dave taught the kids about humanely harvesting the animal with respect. Trapping has been a way of life for hundreds of years and it's important to pass down this tradition. As today's technology consumes us, we need to keep the understanding of wildlife management in check. The kids collected their bounty with big smiles on their face. We got the animals back to the front of the farm and it was a successful project on both methods to manage the raccoon population. I wanted to quickly touch base on a product by Husqvarna. It's a fuel, pre-mixed fuel of 50 to 1 and in, as opposed to your normal pump gas that has a short lifespan on it, this actually lasts up to three years. So it's fantastic for storing your equipment. It provides an easier, more dependable start when you go back to use the equipment and protects fuel systems and saves on your carburetors. I'm gonna be adding it to two of my pieces of equipment here, my brush clearing saw and my pole saw because I'm done using it for the year. And then six months from now, when I come out back in the spring to use the equipment, it'll be easier to start and it's not gonna affect my carburetor and it's not gonna slow me down. That's your Kubota Tech Tip of the Week. We worked hard in the fall to take care of the predators that raid waterfowl nests every year. I was elated when I received a call that winter from a local friend of mine from Tweed, Ontario that was a member of the Delta Waterfowl chapter. He asked that I join him and the members to put out some hen houses. They had placed hen houses on private land that had water throughout the year. They had another six hen houses that needed to get in place before the spring thaw. You can find, you can find, find quite a few volunteers for about four or five hours, but yep, nuts. You know, that's, all, that's you all you need. Have everything ready to rock the day before, right? I mean, we usually, usually get a summer student or a co-op kid, so. I'll order all the material and have them make all the stands for us at work. We had discussed how Delta Waterfowl got these houses for them after the banquet that they held, and they were already planning on getting volunteers for next year to put many more out. By joining your local chapter, you can get involved with these types of activities. The conservation efforts like this will keep predators away from the nests and allow ducks to prosper in the area. Local residents Jim Palmatier and Jesse Wood 
organized the local chapter with volunteer time that helps every hunter in the area. With the passion of the outdoors, Kevin and his son, Reed Garrison, join in the fun as we get these six remaining hen houses in place for the summer. It's exciting to know that hen houses consistently boost nest success of up to 80%, whereas on ground nesting mallards, it could be as low as 10% because of the predation. Delta Waterfowl and its volunteers maintain hen houses across key breeding areas for mallards. These include Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, North Dakota, Minnesota, and Ontario. The ideal spot to put these is a standing body of water that is open and away from the shoreline. Look for a bit of standing timber to provide a bit of cover and you've found the right spot. More than 10,000 hen houses will be placed in 2018 and if you have a spot to put them, I highly encourage your involvement with your local chapter. Jim has already started looking for new locations for next year. Now hopefully in a couple of years we'll see the waterfowl and turkey population increase and we'll have more hunting opportunities with the kids. I appreciate you joining us on the show today. I hope you learned something. Make sure you tune in next week for more tips in the field. Homegrown Hunter TV has been brought to you by Rack Stacker Brand Products, Canada's leading big game attractants company. Campbellford Chrysler, a small town dealer with a huge inventory. And Hockabones Equipment, Ottawa Valley's Kubota dealer. And these other fine sponsors. <laughs>